Thank you. Garrett Cole is with us. And, you know, people talk about when you join the Yankees, you have that Yankee moment. Guess what? You already had yours. <laughs> you had it with the sign. You had everybody with yeah. the sign. That was an incredible moment. Now, your dad kept that for years, right? Yeah, I, I put it in my closet. Uh, and then when I signed, they came over for dinner. And my, mo my Him and my mom came over for dinner to celebrate. Uh, and he brought the sign with me. So, um, and I had it, and I just knew I had to bring it to New York. So. Garrett, a lot of the stuff you set up on the dais was impactful, but I think one of the sentences that stood out for us was, pressure is a privilege. You know that in coming to New York, that pressure is going to be amped up. You're the highest paid pitcher in Major League history. How will you in embrace those expectations? Well, I feel like I've had expectations, uh, not these ones specifically, but expectations that have been high for a long time. Um, you know, going to college, a lot of what you heard was, you know, oh, maybe he should have signed whenever you played bad and um, or people second guessing your decision. And then I became the first overall pick and I had to deal with that kind of pressure in the minor leagues. You know, with the social media these days, I don't even know. Uh, I don't even know how some of these guys do it. I mean, it was like kind of just coming around when I was coming up. So um, and then Pittsburgh, same thing. Um, after AJ left, uh, I was kind of the head guy, and 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 um, you know we we didn't play that well. Um, and so you try to learn from some of those things, and then you get a wonderful opportunity to play with a couple of Cy Young Award winners, three uh, Justin, Zach, and and Dallas, um, and pitch on a big stage here and pitch in some big moments in the postseason. So I've kind of developed, I guess, a process of of how I go about that. Um, and although this situation is obviously something. That I haven't experienced before. I'm just going to lean on the things that I've learned previously, and and um, you know try to adjust and and you know take a step left or take a step right wherever I need to along the way. So take us through the thought process. There are two schools of thought. You could easily say, well, he's a lifelong Yankee. He wanted to be a Yankee. Sign easy, or you could stay home in Southern California. Angels, Dodgers made offers. What were the tipping points that said I got to be with the Yankees? Well, I think ultimately my heart. Um, you know, I talk about following my dream and. Um, you know, I guess someday I might have a family, so what better way to tell your kids to chase after the things they love than to do it yourself and set an example in that way. Um, but also, um, you know, uh, the bright lights of New York and the big city and, you know, being about as far away from home as I guess I could be, um, our challenge is that... that um, our family is going to be able to meet, um, but at the same time, from an organizational perspective, uh, there wasn't a box left unchecked, um, and that's just the way Brian runs things, and that's the way the Steinbrenner family has done it for decades. Um, and so there was really no concern that you would always be competitive, always be surrounded by great talent, great teammates, um, and a really great family atmosphere from the inside out from the Yankees organization. Hal Steinbrenner just said that he wanted you and Amy to know that they were committed to you, and obviously going to nine years shows that what has to happen across these next nine years for this to have been a successful and a productive marriage for both sides well I think um, I think we need to win I think we need to win a world championship and and ideally more than one that's for sure um, you know the organization the organization does such a good job of, of putting us in a position to get to October by surrounding us with great players um, and you know, it's our job to just go out there and, and perform to the best of our abilities and compete for our teammates and compete for our city. Um, and so we'll do that, and the numbers will fall where the numbers will fall. Um, but we'll be out there on the field competing our butts off um, and trying to bring, uh, I mean, let's try to get let's try to get 30, 30 of them, I guess, right? Let's try to get over 30. You know, you've been talked about as a sponge, a guy who loves knowledge, deep into the analytics, biometrics, all of that stuff. Um, how much do you think, or do you think it's important for you to share that with your teammates? It's what you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think, I think the game is just, you know, it's such that's a large sample size. We play so many games, we have so many at bats, he throws so many pitches over the course of the season. Um, so it's hard not to ignore some of the statistics and some of the trends that show up. Um, the analytics did a really great job of, of kind of illustrating um, what my strengths were, um, and a lot of the stuff that I had learned along the way. Um, uh, up until I, I was kind of open to the analytics, um, um, were actually kind of verified by the analytics, right? Um, obviously, um, some tweakage in, in my repertoire and maybe some pitch selection uh, on, again, what strengths to lean on. Um, um, but, you know, I, I, 
I truly feel that you, you can't really lose the art of the game I mean, because you can play the game over and over and over again, but essentially you're playing against human beings. So when you get into a seven game series and you got to face somebody twice, you know, uh, I, I mean, so what if he swung and missed at pitch X for the last six months? You know, it, it's really important what he did, you know, five games ago when you faced him. Um, and that's when the chess mask comes, right? That's when reading body language um, and trying to perfect the art and staying within yourself um, and taking as much information as you can, trusting your teammates really, really becomes important. So it's a balance. So there are a few times maybe when the data says go with the slider and you know in your head, I got to throw it, but you say, I'm feeling a four seam yeah, fastball. You got to trust your gut. I mean, your, your, your catcher's right there looking at the body language. You're right there uh, knowing what you're executing, um, you know, where, where you're most likely to miss in those situations, how um, those situations match up with the strength of the hitter. So there's a lot of different variables. Um, there's also just kind of your gut, you know. Uh, you, you play this game uh, uh, long enough, um, kind of like you guys broadcast long enough. You have, a, you have a good gut. You know what questions to ask. And, and you know, sometimes I just know what pitches to throw. So um, you got to trust those things and also just trust that your teammates are there, right? You got to go for it. Uh, if the guy puts a good swing on it, thank God you got a good defense behind you. You knew the Yankees were going to make a lucrative offer, and they did an offer that you ended up accepting but they had a secret weapon with them out on the west coast they brought andy pettit yeah. out there with them to be part of the yeah. conversation how impactful was that i, I imagine you might have felt like an 11 year old again i did initially at first for sure i mean um yeah i think he's uh, certainly one of my favorite Yankees, probably the city, one of the city's favorite Yankees. Uh, and he tends to win, uh, if not, uh, he, he tends to win in October. Uh, I know the meeting was in November, but we can, you know, when, when Andy when Andy pitches anything, uh, whether it be to come to the Yankees or a game uh, in the postseason, he usually gets the W, and I, he did again this time. Two quick questions. We'll let you go jersey-wise. When you were 11, whose jersey were you wearing at that at that World Series game? Uh, I was wearing Derek Jeter's jersey, yeah. Okay. And then 45, you got that from Luke Voigt. Big yeah. negotiation because he seemed willing to give it away basically he, he was he was not willing to give it away um <laughs> but uh yeah we, we we spoke on the phone we had a really nice conversation and and um um you know i'll i'll, I'll, let, I'll let i don't, i haven't uh, spoken to luke to know if he wants to you know really reveal exactly what happened um so um you know but we, we exchanged maybe a gift or something and uh he was very kind to to give me the jersey um so i'm, I'm really thankful for that yeah it's so good to meet you congratulations thank you very much for having me on here. all right Thanks, let's Garrett. get it over to michael and meredith Stan.